Hello and welcome to another video tutorial by Mr. Burston. This video tutorial is Inventor 08, Additional Operations. We've talked a lot about a lot of very important operations, mirror, extrude, revolve, loft, sweep. So many of those operations are so important and they require a lot of explanation. This video is here to serve for some of those features that really don't need that much explanation, um, that they're very, very easy to use. For my students who are listening to this, we're going to do a little bit of extra work to make sure that you can do everything that you need to do for your assignment. For anybody else who's wa watching, um, today what I'm going to be going over is I'm going to go over the fillet tool, the chamfer tool, the shell tool, the text tool, and the emboss tool. I'm going to go over all five of those materials, uh, five of those tools, because they're super easy to use. I think text, honestly, the text tool in Inventor is probably the hardest tool to use out of all the tools I'm going to show you. And you're going to see why here in just a moment. Very first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to hit Start 2D Sketch. I'm going to start it on my front plane as always. I'm going to make myself a rectangle. And I want that rectangle to be 4 by 2 inches. All right. And I'm going to do a little bit of extra dimensioning. I'm going to dimension this line away from this middle point right here by one inch. And then the other thing I'm going to do, I'm going to use the right, um, I'm going to use the right uh, constraint tool here, and I'm going to do what's called a coincident constraint. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this line. I'm going to click on that dot right there, and that's all that we had to do. Here's what here's what that dimension did you can see that these two lines are purple right now right now what i can do is i can adjust this box up and down that's the main problem right this box can move freely up and down it cannot move t side to side you can tell that i can't do that because i set that dimension at one inch but i can move it up and down and to prove to you that this works right move it all the way down here i'm going to go back i'm going to hit coincident constraint click on this line click on that dot boom that is now hard in place it cannot move anywhere else okay I'm going to hit finish sketch. Zoomed in a little bit too much. That's okay. I'm going to hit my home button. I'm going to hit extrude. I did that by tapping E on my keyboard. That's a shortcut for extrude. I'm going to say that I want this to be two inches and done. Now, for my students, this is the next step that I want you to take. Most of them have me on mute anyway, so this will be uh, easy for them to follow along with. I'm going to click on the end of my box here. I'm going to click on an additional plane here, and I'm going to hit offset from plane. I want to say one inch. I'm going to set this at one inch, that same distance that I set it away from the middle. And then I'm going to click on my mirror tool. I'm going to click that. I'm going to click on mirror plane, and I'm going to click on that plane right there, and I'm going to hit OK. For my students who are listening right now who can hear me, what we're going to do, I'm going to make a lot of modifications to this cube over here. I want you to make similar but different modifications to this cube over here to show me that you know how to use fillet and chamfer and all the other tools I talked about. So zooming in on this, on this box right here. You're going to see a lot of these tools are super duper easy to use. You're also going to see that mirror is not going to copy those, um, copy those features over to my other box. This box is going to stay the way that it is until I go and edit it later. So I'm going to start with the fillet tool. The fillet tool, what that does is it adds a curve onto um, any corner that I want it to. You're going to see, again, it is super duper easy to use. I click on fillet and I click on an edge of my, um, the edge of one of my, uh, and my box and I can click on as many edges as I want to make as many fillets as I want and as you can see inventor automatically solves for all of those curves I don't necessarily want to do that so the only thing that I want to do is I want to hit fillet I want to click on this one side over here and this dimension here that determines the radius of that fillet if I change it to 0.5 you see that that's a lot bigger I want to leave it at 0.25 we're just going to make a tiny fillet it really is that easy. I'm going to flip around to the other corner here, showing you the other tool very quickly. Chamfer is very, very similar. Where fillet makes a rounded edge, chamfer makes a hard edge, right? It makes this very 45 degrees. That's it for the edge. And I'm going to hit OK. 
Fill and chamfer are just that easy, and you can add fill and chamfer to any edge that you want on uh, on a shape. If I really wanted to, I could go and add another chamfer onto the chamfer that I already made. It's chamfers all the way down, right? But I don't necessarily want to do that here, so I'm just going to leave it at that fillet and that chamfer here, and that's all there is to that. I'm going to turn my camera, uh, going to make sure that my camera is at my home position. The next tool that I'm going to use is a little bit more uh, unique. Um, and this one is super nice if you have a complicated shape that you want to hollow out without doing a bunch of extrusions. Um, and that one is called Shell. Shell is a really, really nice tool where, uh, and it seems to already be auto-selecting some stuff here, but um, Shell is a really nice tool um, to kind of carve out the inside of a shape. And I'll show you what I mean here real quick. And I'm going to click on the side of this right here. And so I didn't have to make a sketch that matches all of those, um, all the curves and the chamfer that I did, but really a, a much more um, obvious use for this is say that I wanted to shell out the front of this here or I'd say that I wanted to haul out the front of this, trying to do an extrusion and trying to match this interior curve and that interior uh, chamfer up there would be super duper difficult. By clicking shell, um, what that does is, well, it hollows out the entire thing, but the main thing that I want you to see here when I hit OK is I didn't really have to do a lot of crazy extrusions to match this, um, this chamfer right up here. Shell did that automatically, and what we can see as well with Shell, your options with Shell are pretty, are pretty, you know, they're there. Um, the thickness of the wall that you want left behind. So if I change that to 0.25, um, you're going to see that that interior shape. You can see that the interior of that automatically went down, right? But the more you adjust that, um, let me fix my camera here real quick. The more you adjust and mess around with that, the more you're going to see. Um, you know, the, the thicker walls. So if I change this to point 0.1, you can see that I have a, a very nice camfer here. And this really demonstrates uh, the point that I'm trying to make very nicely. So let's change this down even further to point 0.05. I'm going to hit enter. You can see that by shelling out this inside here, I want you to see that there's this camfer right here that automatically got shelled out. There, The fillet is visible on the other side. You can see that. It is a super easy way to hollow something out while maintaining all of those complex features. That's the shell tool for you, and we're going to leave it like that. The very last two tools I'm going to show you are, are uh, text and emboss. So click on the front of my shape here. Click on Start 2D Sketch. I'm going to click on my text tool. The first thing I need to do is I need to draw a box. And this one I am actually clicking and holding for unlike most everything else in, in um, Inventor. And then I get presented with this dialogue. And I'm going to say, uh, we'll do Mr. Burston's video tutorials. There we go. And I'll hit enter on this so that it's nice. Um, and we have uh, some regular text options up here. We'll say that I want this centered. Um, but the main thing that I want you to see here is that we're not going to be dealing with a font size here. We're actually going to be dealing in inches. So I'm going to change this to 0.25 inches. Um, ooh, important note. If you want to change something that you've already typed, make sure that you highlight it first. Otherwise, nothing will happen. So I'm going to hit 0.25 and I'm going to click on, uh, we'll try and click on some other option here. Uh, the main point here is don't hit enter. Hitting enter will finish it immediately and you might not be done and that's no good. The other thing that I can do is I can click from a huge list of fonts. I have a personal preference for a font called Oxygen. So I'm going to click on Oxygen. Again, make sure that your text is highlighted if you want to change text uh, after, you've ed after you've made it. I have Mr. Burst's video tutorials here. I'm pretty happy with that. Um, the only other options here are like kerning. So that's the space between letters. I don't want to adjust. I don't want to mess with that. And so I'm going to hit OK. There we go. I have Mr. Burson's video tutorials. Awesome. Now I can go ahead and hit finish sketch on this. And then the really nice thing, if we take a look up here at this emboss tool, take a look at this, where it has some text and we're embossing it onto something, right? Awesome. That's exactly what we're going to do. 
So I'm going to click on emboss. I'm going to click on my name here, uh, that Mr. Burson's video tutorials. And I'm deciding, um, it depends on what you want to do. Do you want to bring it out or do you want to cut it in? Or do you want to do a, a combination of both? I want to cut it in. So I'm going to hit engrave from faith face. And then you just have to determine the depth and what direction that it's going. Um, otherwise you just hit okay. It loads for just a moment on my end, but you can see that that is now cut out. If we look from the other side, we can see that it's cut all the way through. And that's all there is to it. That is all the tools that I plan on showing you today. Um, if you are one of my students, all I need you to do is that box that we mirrored at, uh, at the beginning of the video. I want you to use the fillet, chamfer, shell, emboss, and text tool on this cube. But it cannot look like my cube over here. I want you to do your own thing with this cube over here, okay? But that's really all there is to it today. Um, the only thing I really didn't go over is when you make text, um, you can see that I have this purple box on the outside. Obviously, you can use your dimension tool with that, you know, um, dimension with those lines, dimension with that up there, so on and so forth. But that is really all I have for you today. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask me in class, or if you're somebody else who's watching this video, feel free to ask me in the comments. I'd be happy to reply. Otherwise, have a good day.